right, we're going to get started here. Okay, remember guys, we spoke about all the things that we need to know in terms of these graphs. Remember, we need to know what the turning point is. Uh, Ma'am, spelling is still not 100%. We need to know what the turning point is. We need to be able to tell Ma'am what the x-intercepts are, what the y-intercepts are, right? And we need to be able to tell Ma'am the domain and the range of all of these. All right, now, if we start with the turning point, our turning point is always what's happening over here at the end. Now, if you look at the graph that we've got over here, our turning point is at the origin, which means it's at zero, zero, right? Which means that is where our turning point is. So our turning point is at the point zero, zero. Now, I want you guys to tell me how many x-intercepts are there? If I make, oh, well, we're not going to be able to do that here, actually, now that I think about it. We will not be able to do that with this graph. All right. If I have to find the value A, if I have to find the value A, guys, I'm going to take this point over here, this negative two and two that I came. Um, I will in just a, oh, actually, I can't because they haven't been forwarded to me, but I'll let you know what's going on in just a little bit. All right. I'm going to take this value over here for X. And I'm going to take this value here for y, and I'm going to substitute them here for y and for x, and that will give me the value of a. So what I'm going to get is my y value is 2, so I'm going to get 2 is equal to a times negative 2 all squared, right? So I'm going to get 2 is equal to a times negative two all squared. Tell me what negative two all squared in the chat is. What is negative two all squared? You guys can pop your answer in the chat. That's it. Good, I'm Khalang. That's it, Tariro. It's four. So now my equation reads, I'm gonna follow, I'm gonna continue up here. Two is equal to four A. Okay. Um, Limo says, are we going to be revising trig? Not today, must really. All right. I will let you know what's happening in just a bit. Divide both sides by four. Therefore, A is equal to a half. So the equation that we're looking at over here is Y is equal to a half X squared. Okay. Okay. Now we have to look at this graph over here, guys. Okay, and we need to figure out what the turning point is going to be. Mm. Turning point, the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the domain and range. Okay, but we're going to do that in the lesson in just a bit. All right, okay. Um, for those of you who were not here on Monday, this is what we well, we were doing, the turning point, the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the domain, and the range on Monday. So if you're looking for that particular lesson, it's going to be on the website underneath today's lesson. Uh, but without further ado, welcome to what will be, everybody. If you are new, um, 4 divided by 4 is not a half. I had 2 is equal to 4a. So I need to divide this side by four, divide this side by four. Those two will cancel. Therefore, A is equal to two over four, and then A is equal to a half. Okay, I hope that makes a bit more sense. All right, we are on lesson four of eight. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time, you've missed lessons one, two, and three. Okay. Um, and if you would like to catch up on those lessons, then you can go have a look on our website. Okay, have a look on our website. The lessons are right underneath this lesson that we're having today. Today, we're going to be talking about the hyperbola. Okay, and when we talk about the hyperbola, we need to know a couple of things first. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you guys to two things today. The asymptotes and the quadrants. And Kama, I'm going to ask you to just hold on for me, my sweetie. I just want to get through what I need to say and then I will take your question, okay, or your comment. I know we haven't said hi to each other yet, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there, okay. All right, so if you guys look at our Cartesian plane, this is my y-axis, 
and this is my x-axis, you will notice that my, my Cartesian plane is broken up into four parts. It's broken up into four parts. And these parts are called quadrants. Okay, so you will note that that's it. I'm Khalang, please don't do my job. I'm Khalang's trying to steal my job. I'm watching you. <laughs> All right, so we call these four parts quadrants. Okay, they're called quadrants. Now we would call this first part over here, quadrant one. And we normally use Roman numerals, quadrant one, the one over here, eh. the one over here is quadrant two. Okay, let me use my, my Roman numerals instead of just the letter two, quadrant two. Over here, down here, we've got quadrant three. And over here, we've got quadrant Okay, now, one of the things we're gonna to have to note as we're going here is that on this side of my Cartesian plane, in quadrant one, in quadrant one, all my X values are positive and all my Y values are also positive. Right? But in quadrant two, what kind of X values do I have in quadrant two, guys? My X values are good, they're negative. They're negative. And my Y values, what about my Y values? What are my Y values in this quadrant here? They are positive, good, because my Y axis is over here. So they will be positive, right? Now, let's come down here. Let's come down here. And we're going to look at quadrant three. What about my Y values, I mean, my X values in quadrant three, guys? My X values would be negative, good. And my Y values would also be negative, good. And then in quadrant four, my X values will be positive. And my Y values would be negative. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of a multiplication game. We're going to play a bit of a multiplication game. So a positive times a positive will give us a, a what? Good, it will give us a positive. Chimera, I'm gonna help you out in just a second, my sweetie. It will give us a positive, good. Now we're gonna do the same in quadrant two. Okay, a positive, times a negative is gonna give us a negative. Good, it's gonna give us a negative. Right, in this quadrant here at the bottom, a negative and a negative are going to give us a positive, good. All right, and in this quadrant, a positive and a negative will give us a negative, excellent, all right. So I'm going to erase all of these arrows because they don't mean anything. I want the, the positives and the negatives, actually. That's what I want. I want the positives and the negatives. Now, we're going to be looking at a, uh, not a quadratic, a hyperbolic function, a hyperbolic function. Now, look at the function that I've written over here, guys. F of x is equal to one over x. I know that, yes, or not yesterday, Monday when we were talking about uh, quadratic functions. We said that X needs to be an element of real numbers. But today, I know that there is a number that X cannot be. What number can X not be, guys? And while you guys think about that, Karma, how are you doing, my sweetie? How are you doing, Queen? Hi, girl. How are you doing? I'm not okay, but you know I'm okay. Hi, Bo. Not okay and okay also. What's happening? What's going What's going on? Oh, girl, a lot. A lot is going on. Yeah. Oh, oh, All right, you have, to, you have to tell me. Is, is school a lot? Is that is that what yeah. I'm getting? That getting yeah, at? girl, yeah. I'm crying right now. Okay, hey, all right. Um, okay. 
<laughs> I was going to ask like before you start because like I don't want to like disturb like the um, the, mm-hmm. the I don't want to say lecture but <laughs> the thing I'm about mm-hmm. um if like you could just like quickly just like rise just like back to the top like where we we're doing like the revision of the what's that thing called oh oh my god you mean the parabolic function i just wanted to take a quick screenshot and then after that wait a local oh my god this android oh Thank you so much. Um, but and then whenever after that, you're ready, yeah, I'm done. After um, that, and then after that, I was just going. Oh, never mind. It's Sarah. I was going to answer that as well. Okay, excellent. I love that you yeah. did. I love that you did. One hundred percent. See, sometimes it is kuningi, but when you come to Batobi, it's less kuningi. You know what I mean? Yeah, girl. Yeah, ma'am. <laughs> when I tell you that it's kuningi and it's getting kuningier, do you know what my first paper is? My first paper, it? it's life orientation. And I understand uh, what you're saying. How is that kuningi? Wait. How is life orientation kuningi? <laughs> Wait, and let me tell you, I know that no one should be failing life orientation because it's like the most easiest subject ever. But yo, mm-hmm. the way they do that at my school is just so cringe. Like they will give you five essay questions and you need to finish it within the next hour. Tell me where you've ever yeah, heard of that. Yeah, they, they do that. They do that in Max, in, in LO. They do. Yeah. They do. Man, I'm sorry, Max. It's, just, no it's, gonna, it's gonna be okay. Look, yeah. we're gonna get through it. We're gonna end up on the other side, grooving on that other side because we finished exams. Don't even stress. Okay. People All right, are Max, complaining okay. about okay. physics, we're, man. Okay, we're going to continue. Come on, oh. can, can we pick this conversation up in just a little bit? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Bye. All right. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I need to have this conversation with Kama at the beginning of the, the lesson. Otherwise, we're going to start, like, deviating from the subject. All right. Okay, so we know that X cannot be equal to... <laughs> cannot be equal to zero. And this value that says that X cannot be equal to zero is our asymptote. It's called an asymptote. Okay, an asymptote. And what this means is that at X is equal to zero. So along this entire line here, where X cannot be equal to zero, cannot touch this line over here. Right. But my graph can be any other number. My, my X can be one. X can be two, X can be three, X can be four. But if I put in the number, if X is equal to one, guys, what would my Y value be? If X is equal to one, Y will be equal to? Pop it in the chat. Teacher knows. Hello. Hello? Hi, ma'am. You had your hand up, ma'am. So I thought you were going to answer my question. I don't. I don't know what happened. <laughs> All right. It's not going to be zero, guys. Be careful. If I make x one, I'm going to get one over one, which is equal to one. Okay. Good. Now, if x is equal to two, what will happen if I have x is equal to two? Y is equal to how much? Okay, Amokhalang says, how, ma'am? Y is equal to 1 over X. Replace replace X with 1, Amokhalang. Replace X with 1. Sinoguche? If X is equal to, t- to 2, good. It would be 1 over 2 or 0, 0,5. 1 over 2. Excellent. And then if X is equal to 3, if X is equal to three, what am I going to get? Y is equal to? Good. Y is equal to one over three. Excellent. So what's gonna to happen to my graph is as we go in this direction, one, two, three, my Y value, which started at one, is going to, I'm gonna have a point there and then there and then there. So my graph, remember my graph can't touch the Y axis my graph then needs to turn this way. Okay, it needs to turn in that direction. Okay, but now, what happens 
Good. Yes. It also can't touch the asymptotes. Good. The asymptotes. Now we're going to note. Okay. We're going to note that if <laughs> Master, you're saying hukom. I need to understand what you mean by that. Okay. So now. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by why. Okay, I need you to explain a little bit more to me. Why what? Why what exactly? Okay, Nkechi, remember, my X value cannot be equal to zero. That is the asymptote. X cannot be equal to zero because when I have one over zero, that is undefined. So X can't be equal to zero. Now, if I look on my Cartesian plane, this point over here, where x is zero, that's everywhere along this line. Okay, so my graph cannot touch this line. Okay, my graph can't touch that line. And that's what we mean when we say that it's an asymptote. So this graph that I've just drawn over here can only go in this direction. Okay, now what happens guys? If I make all my x values negative, if I say x is equal to negative one, what will y be equal to? If x is equal to negative one, y is equal to? Remember guys, y over one over negative one, how much will that give me? How much will that give Are you there? Shoot, I feel like something's happening. Something's happening. I'm not hearing from I'm anybody there. at the moment. Hello, my sweetie. What's up? Okay, my Trahonolo is not responding, so I'm going to wait for that. Okay. So if yes, x is equal to negative one, y is equal to negative one as well. Right, Matlohonolo, if my x is equal to negative two, what will y be equal to? I'm lost. Okay, where did I lose you? And now she's muted. Matlohonolo, I need you to unmute again for me, my sweetie. Okay, if x is equal to negative two, y is equal to negative a half. Okay, if x is equal to negative three, what am I going to get? Good, that's a terrier negative one over three. Okay, so if this is my y value negative one over here, yes, Nkechi, you get to choose which x values to put in. Okay, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to draw a, a hyperbolic graph in just a little bit. Okay, so if I put all of these values in here, I know that when x is equal to negative one, y is equal to negative one. When x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to negative a half, which is over here. When x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to a third. So my graph needs to go like that. Okay. Yes, we are definitely going to do more examples. All right. And again, Mem's drawing isn't 100%, so don't, no judgment. No judgment. All right. So we will note. Guys, we're going to notice that our graph is a positive graph. Do you see that our graph is positive? Okay, it's one, positive one over X. And we have managed to draw the graph of positive one over X in the positive values, in the positive quadrant one and the positive quadrant three. Okay. If I had to draw the graph of f of x is equal to negative 1 over x, where do you guys think I would draw the graph? If the positive graph is drawn in quadrants 1 and 3, where would I draw the negative graphs? Good, Linda Gutierrez, quadrants 2 and 
four. Good. So we would draw our negative graphs here and here. But this is the beauty of, of mathematics. Here's the beauty of mathematics. When we are drawing these hyperbolas, we don't actually have to be, um, we don't have to be direct. Okay, I can just pick up a pen and do that. Okay, wait, I need to draw it a little bit better. I can just do that. As long as my graph doesn't touch my asymptote, like that, that is the graph of f of x is equal to negative y over x. f of x is equal to negative 1 over x. Tiamo and Kimutlutlu, guys, please. Okay. <laughs> All right. Buntle. Buntle, what's your question? Hi, Buntle. All right. Okay. So I want you guys to note here that my asymptote is at x is Hi, equal to zero. Hello, my sweetie. How are you, ma'am? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Um, you said that x when it's a, it's a negative one, and you said that y is equals to um one over negative one, right? The one. Mm -hmm. that and same applies to um, x equals to negative two. You said it's a negative and it's one over two. Why is it yes. not like the first one? Why is it not a negative, a negative two also? That's what I would like to know. Okay, so, okay, hold on, my sweetie. When we chose x is equal to one, we said that y is equal to one. You agree with me? Yes. So when we say x is equal to two, my y value is one over two, agreed? Yes. Okay, cool. Now let's look at if x is equal to negative one, what is my y value equal to? It's going to be one over negative one. Good, which is the same as negative one, yes? Yes. Good. It's negative one. Now, if my x is negative two, y is going to equal to? One over negative two. Good, which is the same as negative a half. Agreed? Oh, okay. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, great. I'm glad Thank that makes know. sense, my sweetie. Awesome stuff. Mateo, do you have a question for me, my sweetie? Hi, ma'am. <clears throat> Hello, my sweetie. What's up? So, ma'am, I, I just wanted to make sure of something. Yes. So when you're when you're choosing x it's not like the parabola where x can only be equal to zero one or negative one you can choose any number yes but remember Mateo, with with even with the parabola you can choose any number you can choose any number we don't necessarily have to choose these numbers i'm choosing these numbers because it shows me graphs in both my quadrants one and three and in the quadrants two and four. Okay, that's why I'm picking those two, those two points. Okay, these points. You can pick any of the points. The only reason what the, the reason why in the parabola we chose negative one, zero, and one is because it gives us a full picture on the negative side, on the positive side, and on zero. That's why we chose um, those two points. Oh. Okay. Yes, so you get to you. choose your own points as long as they draw the graph for you. Okay. Oh, and then one more thing. Yes. I wasn't here when you were explaining the whole thing, but ma'am, what's an asymptote? Okay, an asymptote is the thing that our x value cannot be. Okay, and we know that x can't be equal to zero because yeah. one over zero is undefined. Yes? Uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So same with our y. Our y also cannot be equal to zero. And it's also an asymptote. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my graph cannot touch this line either. This one. Okay. okay. Thank you. Man. No worries. My All right. Takani, do you have a question before we, we jump into the next thing? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am, I have a question. 
So All mem, right, I wanted to, mem, I wanted to know, like, how do you know that the graph is positive or it has to be a negative graph if they only give you, like, the sum? Okay, but look, if we look at this one over here, Takane, it's 1 over x. It's a fraction, but any number that's sitting on its own has a positive in front, yes? Going to go to quadrant. It's going to go quadrant. to quadrant one and three. <clears throat> yes, that's it. And we've proven that because the the <clears throat> when we multiply the two things, they will give us a positive and a positive in these two quadrants, quadrants one and three. And if my graph is negative, like if they say f of x is equal to negative one over x, which quadrant is it going to be in, Takane? Ma'am, I did. Can you please repeat? I did not hear. If my if my graph is negative, which two quadrants will my graphs be in? Oh, quadrant two and quadrant four. Yes, because in those graphs, I mean, in those quadrants, the values give us a negative and a negative. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, excellent. Amukhalang, what up? Ma'am, how do I know that the, um, the asymptote has to be horizontal or vertical? Okay, um, I'm going to do that right now, okay? Okay. Okay, so um, over here, we know that x cannot be equal to, if we look at f of x is equal to one over x, x can't be? Zero. Good. Now, if we look on our x-axis, this is our x-axis, yes? Where is x equal to zero? Here, right? Yes. You agree with me? Right there yes, in I the agree. middle, that's where x is equal to zero, right? But yes. remember, if I draw a point over here, let's say this is four. This coordinate is also zero and four, four. correct? My x value mm -hmm. is still zero, mm -hmm. right? Over here, if this is eight, what is my x value over here, Amkhala? Zero. And eight, correct? Eight. So that means everywhere along here, my graph is? My graph is the asymptote. Do you understand what's happened there? Yes. Okay. So the whole vertical asymptote, this whole line here, this everywhere along this line, x is equal to zero. So that means that, that means that this line, this whole line is the asymptote. Am I making sense? Yes. Okay. So that's how we know whether it's vertical or horizontal. Horizontal. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, I hope that I hope that made sense. Thanks, Amakalang. Bongi, one last question, and then we're going to jump into this question over here. Okay. Hi, Bongi. Okay, Bongi is not um, unmuting yet, but when Bongi does, we'll have a conversation with Bongi. All right, let's talk about this particular graph that they've given us over here. Okay, first of all, guys, we need to ask ourselves, is it positive or negative? Is it positive or negative, guys, this graph that they've given us over here? Positive or negative? Good, it's positive. So which quadrants is it going to fall under? Quadrants? Which two quadrants? Good, Tiamo. Okay, it must be one and three because these are the positive ones. This one is positive and this one is positive. So it must be in quadrants one and three. Good. All right, it's not negative, it's positive. Now, let's talk about the asymptotes. Okay, asymptotes. What do we know that X cannot be equal to? X cannot be equal to what? Zero. Good. X cannot be equal to zero. So one of our asymptotes is this line along the whole part where X is equal to zero. Right. Now, our Y asymptote, our Y asymptote is going to be this value here. So Y cannot be equal to two. 
So we're going to go to two. Let's put two over there. And that is our Y asymptote like this. Okay. And then we're going to sketch our graph. Okay, we're going to do this. Just like that. There we go. Quadrant one and quadrant three. Okay, I saw somebody ask, how do we know if it's positive or negative? If there's no negative over here in front of my graph, it's automatically positive. It's positive. All right, give me a thumbs up if you understood why Mem drew the things that she drew. Yes, Onako, you must. You must draw them. Okay, you must draw them. They're very important. They are needed. They are needed. Okay, because that shows you know where your asymptote is. Okay, yes, Tamanu. Okay, we're going to look at it again in just a little bit. Okay. All right, let's try that again. All right, Nicole, I can do that. Okay, excellent. Remember, when we are drawing the graph of a hyperbolic function, guys, we need three things. Actually, we need four things, and we're going to talk about the fourth one just now. Okay. Remember that my hyperbolic function must always look like there must be one in this quadrant, and there must be one in this other quadrant here. If they are positive, and Lufuno, again, like I said, this is a positive graph because there's no value over here. There's no negative over here. This is automatically a positive. All graphs, Atlehan, all graphs are f of x. Okay, all graphs are f of x. Okay, good. Now, Mam says that the because the graph is positive, in the graph above here, we proved that when we draw the, the positive graphs, they need to be in quadrants one and three because that's where the graphs are positive. Okay, so... We know that this is positive, so quadrants, quadrants one and three, right? Now, our asymptotes, our asymptotes, the first one is that X cannot be what? What can X not be equal to? X cannot be equal to what value? Zero, good, X cannot be equal to zero. So we know that because on this Y axis, everywhere along this Y axis, X is equal to zero. This line is then my asymptote. So my graphs cannot touch this line. My other asymptote is this number here. And that is my Y asymptote. This is my Y asymptote. So that tells me that y cannot touch, okay? Y cannot be equal to two. So on my graph, I'm going to go to the y-axis here at two, and I'm going to draw an asymptote this way. Right. Now, remember, my positive graph needs to be in quadrants one and three. So I don't even have to measure my graph. I just have to draw it like I would a hyperbola. I just have to do this. Mm. And that. Done. Now, give me a thumbs up if everything I've done now makes sense. Yes, good. All right, can you see what's up, my sweetie? 50-50, you said 50-50, Mateo. Okay. Hi, can you see Hi, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I, I wanted to ask, um, does this mean 
that X determines the, your asymptoms? Yes. So whatever value that X cannot be determines my asymptote. The value that X can't be. So we know that if we make X zero, I'm going to get one divided by zero and one divided by zero is undefined. So that's why mm -hmm. we're saying that the asymptote is where X cannot be equal to zero. Zero. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Excellent. I, I need you to, to just put your hand up for me and have a conversation with me about um, what you mean by you use uh, Cambridge. Okay. Can you see other can you see, not the can you see I just spoke to other can you see how can I help oh my goodness <laughs> hello hi ma'am hi my sweetie ma what's, I want what's to... going on so far I'm understanding everything I just wanted to mm -hmm. ask that when we draw the the lines that are not supposed to touch mm -hmm. the asymptote are we gonna have to plot them or anything or is the whole no. point of the formula just to figure out Asymptotes. You're just you're just trying to figure out where to draw the graphs. You don't have to plot them. There's nothing fancy you need to do. You just draw them. Okay. Okay. Thank That's you, ma'am. You're very welcome, my sweetie. Excellent. Okay. We don't plot. We just draw. There's no need to plot, guys. Just draw. Yes. The value of the Q. Hi, Rafilwe. Hi, ma'am. What's up? Um, I understand um, the asymptotes and the dotted lines, but I don't understand the lines that we draw curved. Like, why do we draw the curved line? Okay, How because, okay, our graph, our graph is approaching this line. So our graph is getting as close as, as it can to zero, but it can't touch zero. That's why. Okay, oh. so I can choose any value right next to zero, but I can't choose zero. So what this what this curve is telling me is I can choose 0, 0,5 or 0, 0,3 or 0, 0,2 or 0, 0,01, but I cannot choose zero. And that's why my line, do you see how my curves are getting closer and closer to the asymptotes, but they're not touching? Yes. That's why. It's because I can choose all the other values that are close to zero, but I can't choose zero. Okay. Okay. Does that make okay. sense? Yes, it all right. does. All right. Excellent. Awesome stuff. Adelaide, what's up? Hi, ma'am. Hello, my sweetie. What's going on? Um, actually, I don't understand this topic because we haven't done it at school yet, so I'm lost. Okay, like that's lost. okay. That's okay. If you're if you're still a bit lost, then like don't try and have it wreck your brain, my sweetie. It's fine. Okay, just follow. Okay, try and follow where you do, where you don't. When your teacher does it at school, it will fill in the gaps for you, and then you end up being like, oh, I see. Okay, just follow wherever you can. And then when we get to the point where like you're doing it at school, it will make a lot more sense to you. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. All right, Miss Feely. Excellent. All right. We're going to try number two before I take CPS question. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you guys, is my graph negative or positive? Tell me in the chat, is it positive or negative? And tell me the quadrants. Tell me the quadrants that it falls under. Okay. It's negative. Therefore, Good, two and four, quadrants two and quadrants four. Now, what is my asymptote? What is my X asymptote? What can X not be equal to? X cannot be equal to zero, good. And this is my Y asymptote. Therefore, Y cannot be equal to negative one. Good, negative one. So I want you guys to... Go in and draw your graphs in each of the quadrants. Remember, where is my graph negative? Quadrant two and quadrant four. Draw your asymptotes, guys. Here's my first asymptote over here. Here's my next asymptote over here at negative one. Like that. And then when you draw your graph, make sure that your graph is getting as close to your asymptotes as possible, but it should not touch. 
Okay. Oh, no. Sorry. Your mem is drawing in the wrong quadrant. Sorry. This quadrant here, like that. And this one over here. Okay. Stipe, how can I help, my sweetie? Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. What's up? Okay, ma'am. So before we started with f of x equals to 1 over x plus 2, we said that the graph mm. was going to be in the first and third quadrant. But ma'am, when you did it, yes. it was on the first, second, and third. So now uh, I okay. don't understand. Okay, so remember, you... okay. So our asymptotes are going to determine where the graph is drawn. Okay, so if you look here, CPO, uh, CPM, there's my first asymptote, yes? Yes. And there's my second asymptote. So almost look at the asymptotes as the part, as, as like where your new X and Y axis are. Okay. Oh. So when we draw it, this is going to be where the new um, axis is. This is positive. This is positive. Okay. okay. So now Does when they sense? ask us, yes, but when we ask, when they ask us, which quadrant is the graph in, which one are we going to say? Because it's like in between. You're going to say the one that we know. If it's positive, it's going to be one and three. And if it's negative, it will be yeah. two and four. That's all you need to, oh. that, that will determine for you. The only reason we call it quadrants is so you remember how to draw it. Is it this way and that way? Or is it on this side and this side? That's why we call it that way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Man. All right. Thank Excellent you. question, CP. Awesome. Didi, what's up? Okay, I want you guys to try this one, guys. Um, try hi, to draw this graph over here. Yes. Um, um, I just wanted to ask, how do you know which quadrant to draw in by looking at the question? Okay, at the beginning of the lesson, Didi, we talked about the fact that if they are positive, they must be in quadrants one and three. And if they're negative, they must be in quadrants two and four. Okay, that's oh, something that we started the lesson with. Okay, so if it's positive, then it will be one and three. And if it's negative, it will be two quadrants, two and four. Okay, so okay. when we look at the first number, like the, um, our, our AX our value. Yes, three over X. Is it positive or is it negative? Oh, okay, okay, I see. Is it, is, tell me about this one. Is it positive or negative? It's positive. Good, it's positive. So what which two which quadrants will it fall under? Um where would we draw it? Quadrants and three. Excellent. Good. Then do we understand the asymptotes part of it? Um yes, ma'am. Good. X cannot be equal to zero. Good. And y cannot be equal to one. Positive Good. one. Positive one. Excellent. And then you just go and draw it, Didi. And then you just draw your hyperbolas where they need to go. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Excellent. Good question. Takane, what's up? Ma'am, I understand everything, but the asymptotes rules, like where it's supposed to go. Can you please repeat it again? Because I got to okay. So, So the X asymptote, you always draw it for now in grade 10. We draw it on this line. This is where you draw the X asymptote. Okay. The Y asymptote is going to be this last number that you have over here on the graph. So the Y asymptote in this last question will be one, correct? Oh, yes. So we're going to go here and we're going to find one and then we're going to draw the line this way. Okay. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Makes sense? Okay, yes. excellent. So, All right, good stuff. Oh, yes, unmute for me. I'm sorry, I muted you while you were still asking. Unmute. So, ma'am, since they don't give us like the X number, like they don't give us the number for X. So for us, the line, the way we're going to draw asymptote is on the X axis line. On the x-axis line, yes, because they what they're actually yes. saying is that the graph will cross the x-axis some way. 
right? But that's not X being equal to zero, that's Y being equal to zero. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, man, thank you. Excellent. Okay, I want us to highlight one more thing before we continue. And before I even continue, I just want to erase all of this nonsense of mine because there's a lot of things happening over here. Okay, now let's go back to the first graph. I can see everybody's pretty much done with this last question, which is awesome. I want us to go back to the first graph, graph number one, where f of x is equal to one over x plus two, right? Now, when we drew this graph, we said that our x asymptote is here, right? Our x asymptote is down here. Da -da -da -da. And our y asymptote is at two. So two, which is this way. Okay. And we said that our graphs would look like that. That one would look like that. And this one over here would come down this way. Right, would come down this way. Now, if you guys note, you will note that over here, my graph cuts the x-axis, but the x value over here, we don't know what it is. Okay. What we do know is that the y value over here is equal to zero. Okay. The y value at this point is equal to zero. Okay. So what we can do is we can take the graph of f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 2. And we're going to replace our y value with 0. We're going to replace our y value with 0. So we're going to take f of x. Remember, f of x is also y. Okay, so we could rewrite this. Instead of writing f of x, we could write y is equal to 1 over x plus 2. We're going to replace y with 0. And then we're going to solve for x, guys. So I'm going to go 0 is equal to 1 over x plus 2. Who wants to put their hand up and tell us what the next move is? What is the next move that we can do? Didi, what can we do next? Um, I'm, I'm not sure because I haven't done this, but I'm going to try. Um, we're going to move to the, mm -hmm. to the other side. So it's going to be negative two. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Then we're going to have negative two is equal to one over X. Next move. Um, no, I'm That's I'm it. Not, Kimoto has got the right idea. If you're stuck, look in the chat. Because this, oh, this is basic algebra. Two over negative one. I mean, over one. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. We need to, how do we get X out of the denominator? I'm not sure. Hey. Okay, we're going to cross multiply my sweetie. We're going to take X over to that side. Okay, so we're going to end up with negative 2X is equal to 1. My next step is? Um, we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. Good, negative two, negative two. Therefore, x is equal to? One over negative two. Or zero. Good, or five. just negative a half. Negative, negative, don't forget the negative. Okay, yes. negative a half. So what that tells us, Didi, is that this x value over here is negative a half. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, do you see what we did there? Yes, ma'am, I see. Excellent. Excellent, I'm happy to hear it. 